Hi, I'm John Fitzgerald and welcome to Custodian TV. Well, we're right in the middle of the global financial crisis. Pretty much end of July, early August, everyone's saying we're coming out of the global financial crisis, but to be careful, and yes, we need to be careful. Unemployment looks set to rise, and the Governor of the Reserve Bank has come out and said he's concerned about interest rates rising, and he's also concerned about housing. And his concerns about housing was he didn't feel we'd have the uplift in housing, but he also recognised that we have a tremendous shortage and isn't exactly sure how we're going to be able to supply that shortage without getting an uplift in prices. Interesting concept, isn't it? Because the truth is, if you've got a shortage of supply, you're going to get an uplift of pricing. And we've already started to see that in the bottom end. I agree. I don't think we're going to get the uplift in the, high, the medium to high end, but that bottom end is really hot. And when I say really hot, we can only see about three months' supply of land on the ground. And we don't see a lot actually coming out of the ground in the near future. And the main reason for that is, and a big byproduct of the global financial crisis, is that the banks aren't lending to developers. And that's a huge problem. They're requiring 50, 100% pre sales. And those pre sales are just not something you're going to get on vacant land because a typical house buyer, even the first home buyer, wants to see a finished product. So you're not seeing a lot of land coming onto the market, a lot of construction jobs. Civil contractors are actually at, a, at their, one of their lowest times they've ever seen. That's positive for us who have a lot of property because we're going to see that bottom end start to rise. And there's no doubt in my mind that it will start to rise. But let's just think about interest rates. What the Governor of the Reserve Bank said is that don't expect interest rates to come down and the next trend could be that they'll go up. When? Well, the interesting thing about that is that the banks have already put their interest rates up. Their long-term rates went up in June 2008, you know, uh, a month, two months ago. So their long-term rates have already gone up and some of the banks have already crept up their variable rates as well. So, from my perspective, if the cash rate changes from 3 to 3.5%, three I don't think that's going to have a great deal of effect on the variable rate because the banks are already creeping up on that variable rate. What I've done, I've locked in half my portfolio. I took a 50-50 on it, recognising that if we're going to build wealth, I believe that the um, variable rate will stay under that 7% for some time. Now, that's not something that is necessarily published anywhere, but if I look at the last 10 plus years, the variable rate has averaged a little bit less than 7%, and I think the next 10 years are going to be fairly similar in that regard. Yes, there'll be times it might go over the 7%, there'll be a lot of time where it's under 7%, and those of us on variable rates now are enjoying tremendous variable rates, rates in the fives and early sixes. I did lock in part of my portfolio though, which really does do two things for me. Number one, it improves my borrowing capacity. Because if you go to a bank and want to borrow, if you're on a variable rate, they'll add around 3% to that to calculate your borrowing capacity. So with half my portfolio, they'll take it, because I've locked in, they'll take that as my full borrowing capacity. The other reason, it gives me insurance with my cash flow. A assurance and insurance with my cash flow in that I know that I've locked in at around 6.2%. I know therefore that if interest rates rise and if my rents rise, etc., my cash flow is going to continually, continually improve unfettered in that regard. So I've locked in 50-50. 50% variable, 50% lock-in. The next six months are going to be very dynamic. You're going to see more and more talk about the housing crisis. And 2010, sometime in 2010, it's going to be the front page of the newspapers, housing crisis, housing crisis. We're starting to hear about it, starting to see it. People are starting to talk about it lots. And, and as you know, the Governor of the Reserve Bank, politicians are talking about it. But it's really going to start to bite during 2010. That's positive for us because it'll drive the bottom end up, which we've already seen with the first home buyers. And people say, oh, well, what about when the first home buyer scheme you know, falls apart at the end of the year? Well, there's two things I've got to say on that. Number one is 
The first home buyer scheme, yes, it might be cut at the end of this year, or it will be cut federally at the end of this year, but some of the states are having their fir own first home buyer scheme. The Victorian government is still giving away 11,000 over the 7,000 that the federal government are going to give. So in Victoria, there is still a first home buyer scheme. But the other key component we need to remember of the first home buyers is all they have to do is sign a contract by either 30 September or 30 December to qualify. That product then still has to roll out. So we're going to see that building boom really start to pick up in 2010 and gain momentum. At the same time, supply is at a critical low, lower than we've ever seen. So stay tuned for that because it's something that is right at the heart of what we want to talk about, particularly as we've discussed before with all the population growth. And that's the key component to wealth building, population growth. Australia's population forecast to grow by nearly 7 million people between now and 2026. That's wealth building. Thank you for listening to me.